first to introduce our first valedictorian, Mackenzie Leibitz. Similarity. 
each of your minds is in some other place. You think of the past, of childhood, of elementary years, a mosaic of the moments that have led to this one today. You think of the future, of a college career, of a new job, of the promise to experience new people and new places, of the opportunity to have a life separate from the one that you live today. These thoughts bring us hope. They allow for the consideration that our lives will not always be the way they are in this moment. They bring us joy to remember the love of past years and the happiness we experienced in those moments. Today, however, I plead with you to pick up a new practice, although it is a difficult one. I ask that you put aside those thoughts and fully engage in the present moment with me. Over the past four years, my classmates and I have spent over 5,000 hours together in the classroom. This doesn't include the two hours of practice or extracurriculars that many of us have spent together, or the weekend games, meets, and tournaments that have occupied so much of our time. It doesn't include the Friday nights spent together at football games, or the evenings spent at the community center parking lot, trying to figure out something to do other than sitting and talking about having nothing to do. For most of us, those four days have been spent with one thought at the forefront of our mind. The final bell in period eight, the last whistle of practice, for the promise of last time from a coach. During second hour, we will the clock's hands move faster, begging 947 to come quicker so we can rush to the snack cart. During third, we lay back in our desks, wishing our teacher would just finally end the lecture. During fifth, we throw back our head and ask what's for lunch, ignoring everything but the growling in our own stomach. During sixth hour, we put in our AirPods and dare anyone to speak to us. During seventh, we pry open our eyes with our hands, and we her home to bed taking an afternoon nap. During practice, we sigh for this drill and groan for that drill. We clench our fists during conditioning. And then the day is over. We return home wishing something else was for dinner. We wish our parents would stop asking how school was. We wish we hadn't made that snarky comment to that friend. We wish we had finished that assignment on time. We wish that tomorrow was Saturday instead of Tuesday. We wish to be in some other place, in some other time, in some other body. Not all of us are guilty of this. I, however, can say with 100% certainty that I spent much of my high school career wishing my life away. I wish to be home in bed after night of homework. I wish to have basketball conditioning at 5 a.m. I wish I had played a better game from the coach who was recruiting me. I wish I didn't have to study for the advanced chemistry final. I wish I wasn't so stressed by academics. I wish my body was some other way. I wish I didn't feel so much pressure to perform on the court. Oftentimes, I found myself wishing to be someone else entirely, to have a day to exist outside of my own life, to forfeit 24 hours worth of moments that made up my days. My experience is a common one. Unfortunately, I didn't make an effort to change my thought process until the most difficult times of my life was over and the harshest stresses had been eliminated. Now, I think back on moments like the time Avery threw her 60-ounce metal water bottle at Casey's head and visited Tom that she was going to have to call an For the time our freshman English class of 20 month students managed to share a single pint of Cherry Garcia ice cream while we were supposed to be reading Romeo and Juliet without my specialist in knowing. I remember the time Kenzie, Lindsay, Alexis, and I snuck out of our dorm rooms in the middle of the night while at a basketball camp to make the three-mile trek to a gas station for footlong popsicles. I look back on my freedom drive sister with on my freedom drive with my sister that I'll never experience again. I think of when I set my hand on fire in advanced chemistry and Colby and Keegan prevented me from becoming a severe burn victim. Or the night the senior class attempted to barricade Mr. Schlott out of the parking lot during our prank to prevent him from catching our other classmates. In the moment, these memories seemed unimportant. Just another couple of minutes that would eventually help us reach our goal of being in some other place with some other people. I realized I had spent almost every day for two years just wishing for the day to be over. I have missed hundreds of thousands of moments with my best friends and classmates. I found myself wishing for many of those days back, if only to appreciate the moments I had missed because I was too busy feeling sorry for myself to see the value in the fleeting nature of them. I began to find it easier to enjoy my days, especially the monotonous moments. I realized that those monotonous moments would be the ones I would miss much. The moments in class and practice that felt so unforgettable. In hindsight, I realized that these moments are the ones I remember the most. Today, I fondly ponder these memories with the knowledge that each day is made of these trivial moments. Yet the way you live within those minuscule moments 
is the way that you live your entire life. And so, I'll ask you for a third time. What are you thinking about right now? Tomorrow, you may remember what I've said today, but right now, I ask you to live in this moment. To feel the joy of it, to feel the sadness of it. I ask that over the remainder of your high school career or your post-grad life, that you allow yourself to feel the moments that make up your life. Allow yourself to sit in your sadness, to understand your own pain, and finally, to pull yourself out of it and keep moving. Fear your joys fully and unencumbered. Allow yourself to mourn your failures, celebrate your victories, and acknowledge how blessed you are to live the life that you live. Thank you.
graduated from Bridgeport High School in 2007. He attended Creighton University, where he received his bachelor's in English rhetoric in 2011 and his master's in business administration in 2018. He met his wife, Kate, at college and has been married for eight years. They have three children, his son, Davey, age five, and his daughters, Parker, three, and Daphne, age one. They currently reside in Omaha, where he works with Blue Cross and Blue Shield, doing research and analysis to help deliver care to Nebraskans. Prior to working for Blue Cross, he worked at Westside Community Schools, Kiewit, and ConAgra. Please join me in welcoming Alex Cobalt. I don't even have a joke about that, I'm just kidding. Please. Um, 
pretty good segue into this next pearl of wisdom, which is don't be afraid to be yourself. I believe it was Mr. Rogers who said, there's only one you, and there's no one better at being you than you. And who are we, who are we arguing, Mr. Rogers? Be yourself is probably something you guys have heard a million times, but in my experience, it, it takes a little while for trimming to really get it. So feel free, Mary, I'm happy to bring that. Okay, now do what I just said and forget Mr. Rogers. Or at least forget the idea there's only one you. People can change. And thank goodness for that. If I just stand up here and only talk about the things that I thought were really important to people 10 or 15 years ago, oh, we would all be worse off for it. Um, unless you like movie full fiction. The really amazing thing about free will and growing up is the constant reinvention and refocusing on what's important and the countless little changes that I've made between today and the first time I've ever talked to you So, be yourself until that self isn't necessarily yourself anymore. So be a new self. Makes sense, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Benjamin Franklin said the two worst things the bad advice and bad manners. So I want to say again, thank you so much for inviting me here today. Um, it's one of my bases. Um, I, I now will conclude my remarks so you guys can get to it and join me as a proud graduate of Bridgeport High School. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Each year, the senior class presents a flower to a special individual in his or her life. At this time, they would like to present this token of love and appreciation. Following the presentation, enjoy the slideshow with the students and the families.
Deus.